I took this picture at our local woodland, spring has arrived, the wild garlic is out in flower, and the beech trees are bursting into leaf. Talking of bursting in, the sunlight was bursting through as well as we can see this rather nice dappled uh, lighting effect. Jogger just happened to run through the picture, waited till he was in one of the light points, uh, took the picture, and this is it. Looking at it in Photoshop, I thought, right, what are we going to do with it? And I've come up with an idea. How about bringing in beams of light? How about enriching the colours and tones in the image? That's what we're going to take a look at doing. So, first things first, beams of light. If we come over to the Layers panel, we're going to select an Adjustment Layer, and the Adjustment Layer we're going to be using is the Gradient. So, clicking on this opens up the Gradient Fill. Yes, and because I've got white as my foreground colour, the fog has descended. But, we're going to make some changes. Come into where it says Gradient, click in the window. That opens up the Gradient Editor. Now, you can use any one of these, it really doesn't matter. So, just select one of your choice, and uh, there it is doesn't look much like beams of light, but there are several changes we need to make first. If we come down to where it says Type, Solid, we're going to change this from Solid to Noise. Now, as changing it to Noise, we can see the difference that makes to the image, but it's still in black and white. We need to make this into Mono, into a grayscale. Now, to do that, if we come down to Color Model, we got RGB. If you change this from RGB to HSB, which is Hue, Saturation and Brightness, you can now come to the Saturation slider, and if we move this across, trust me to pick the one which is going to be solid black. Well, OK, we got one little grey line for our beam of light coming through there. Poor thing. Clicking on Randomize will hopefully, yes, bring in a few more at the top there. Let's see if we can make it through to the end. Well, that's a little bit now on the, uh, yes never rains but it pours but then all of a sudden you come across this one so it just goes to show just click on the randomize button until you find one that you like I think this one could be really useful so I'm gonna quit while I'm ahead and I'm gonna click OK to that right let's click OK again the reason for doing this is we're gonna see it against the background image by changing the blend mode so if we come up change the blend mode from normal in 99.9% .9 of cases soft light is gonna be ideal but it's worth trying screen it's worth trying overlay as well there it is we can see we've now got some beams coming through on the horizontal right coming back to our gradient if we double click on it we're going to come in to style which is linear we're going to change it to angle changing it to angle there's our beams bring your cursor out you'll notice it is a move tool we can now click on it we can drag our beams of light up into position but there's more we can come down to the angle slider we can move this around and as we move this around look at the way we can actually move those beams of light around as well and perhaps something and it's this area here it's this tree in the background it looks like it's twisted but I love the way the lighting is coming through and giving the shadow of the leaves on the trunks of the trees there so it's looking really good like that there right click OK to that darkening down the picture my favorite technique is to come up and to use one of the adjustment layers again now the reason for using the adjustment layer is it doesn't take up any additional space now that's one of the advantages we'll cover some of the other advantages as we work our way through the ones not to use a solid color gradient uh, but use levels uh, brightness contrast hue saturation any of these three are ideal let's go for brightness contrast we're not actually going to use it all we're going to do is change the blend mode from normal to multiply look what that does to the picture now drop down the opacity and we're going to drop down the opacity until we find an effect that we like perhaps something like that there what have we got we got to 49 percent taking a look there's our beams of light coming through there as well looking pretty good colors let's come back make sure you're working on the top layer of the layer stack once again we're going to come to adjustment layers we're going to drop down this time to hue saturation and when hue saturation opens we're going to come to the saturation slider we're going to click on this and we're just going to move it across and as we move it across perhaps that area there looks pretty good what have we got we've got uh, plus 18 like the way that's working so we can just close that 
and there it is. But with adjustment layers, they are what they say on the can. They are completely adjustable. So you can come into it, you can make adjustments. If we come into the gradient, you can go through, you can click on randomize. I'm not going to, because I like the one I've got. But if you don't like the effect, don't be afraid to come back in and just click randomize a few more times until you find the type of effect that's going to work with your picture. You can do this even after saving it and save it as a .psd, in other words, save it as a Photoshop file. But what if you want to increase the amount of beams of light that you've actually got? Well, all you need to do is use Command J, Control J. There it is. We've increased the amount of beams of light. What we can now do with this is just drop down the opacity a little bit. So something like that there would be pretty good. We've got a layer mask. If we come over, if we pick up the gradient tool, dropping down to the tool options, now just make sure you've got the radial gradient, which is the second little icon in. Come over to the gradient editor and make sure you have got the foreground through to transparent. I'm going to click OK to that. Right, I need to press X on the keyboard because I need black to be the foreground color. For some reason it thinks it's blue, but I'll just let it stay there and be a little bit disillusioned. Clicking on reverse, because now reversing it around the other way, because we need to reverse the way it's working. In other words, we want this area to remain intact. We want the outer area to be removed. Dropping the opacity down, we're going to take this down to roughly 50%. Just going to fold that panel out of the way. And if we come to where our beam of light started off from, our source point, we can pull it out following one of the beams down into that area there, just releasing it through it goes and you'll notice the way we've come through and we can just fade it off but this is where we can come in we can change the angle of this beam as well if we want to this is where we can even come back in and with adjustment layers this is the fantastic part about them you can come in and you can experiment you can try the way it's going to work perhaps something like that there and drop down like what that's done to the picture, just taking a look, if I just come down to the background layer, if we just switch it all off, that's the, what we started off with. There it is, just coming through, adding those beams of light. You can see the way they're working in there. That's really sort of, yeah, love the way that's working. You can come in, of course, you can click on the mask, and you've seen the way if I just pick up the radial gradient under the tool options, just uncheck in reverse. Let's bring that back up to about 70%. You can come in, you can just darken down areas by coming through like that there, and just perhaps a little bit darker in the top. So you can use the masking as well with the gradient tool. Just coming into this area, just want to make that a little bit darker, and there it is. What I would recommend, as I do with all pictures, is put them aside. Put them aside for three, four, five days. Don't look at them. Then open them, look at them with fresh eyes. And because you have used adjustment layers, you can come in, you can make any adjustments, but go on, give it a try. Just going to change this to a black background. That really does show off the colors and tones. And if you press tab on the keyboard, that is going to remove all the panels. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please pop along to the website as well. Uh, take a look. There's loads of videos there. But until until the next time, it's happy imaging and take care.